Hey yo, it's Mr. Campbell. We're uh, in Adobe Illustrator today and we're going to learn some more logo design from my class in multimedia, San Benito High School. And we're going to start off with there's a new document. And this part's really important. If you goof this up, you wind up pretty much having to start over. So make sure you're not using points. We're going to change this to inches. So learning how to make a new document is part of what this lesson is about, but it's a really short piece of it. So I'm going to change to 10 inches by 10 inches. I'm just going to go square, and I always want to check to see what units those are, because I know inches, but points and pixels and picas and stuff, I'm not really sure how big those are. Inches, I can, you know, after years in construction and stuff, I, I, I know what an inch is. So here's this, and I'm going to save my document first. So file, save as, and I'm going to use my last name in here. I went someplace I didn't expect. So uh, we're going to go to, sorry, so with a little block there. So we're going to call this Campbell Nebraska logo. So always use your last name and then name the file based on what you're doing. So it's easy to find. So um, it's also going to ask you what version to save as sometimes. My version is older than yours. It's horrible. I'll get over it. Okay, next, layers. I'm going to use layers. I'm just going to pull this away from there and float it because I'm going to be using the heck out of my layer panel. So new layers. I'm going to name the first one name because I'm going to put my name on it. This is for my tracing image, which is not in place yet, and this one is going to be for my art. So if you plan ahead to make your layers and think, what am I doing here, and how should I name my layers in accordance with that, then you're thinking ahead. Planning is everything. So going down here on my name layer, I'm going to click, I'm going to drop into my name. I'm going to use point type so I can easily size it up to fit my document. And so small I can't even see it there. So you want to make it big enough to read, but not so big it's distracting you know so there we go I'm gonna lock that layer because I don't want that to move next I'm gonna go to my tracing image layer. so paying attention to what layer you're on and why you're there is why I leave the layer panel open so I'm gonna go file place and uh, man, I have no idea where this file is I'm looking for I always get stuck at this part it might be in documents and I think it's in here ah, it's not there where is it Look, look, look. Illustrator. Mm. Looking, looking, looking. So, this little short debacle reminds us why it is crucial that you name your folders and pay attention to where you put stuff. So, here's a few logos we're going to work with uh, in this unit. Uh, Apple's actually easier than it looks, but we're going to do Nebraska today. We'll probably do McDonald's next. Now, notice it's not really big enough to fill my space, so I'm going to use the Shift key. If I don't use Shift, I might make Nebraska look wrongish, So I'm going to use Shift and stretch it up. Not all the way to the edges. I want to leave a little bit of space. And uh, not a bad idea to use your Align Panel. I love the Align Panel because it brings with it his friends Transform and Pathfinder, which we're going to use extensively today. Yes. And uh, let's see if that's going to even move. There we go. So now it's centered to my stage or to my canvas, if you will. Now the thing I need to do next with this is I lost my layer panel. Layers, there you are. So open this up. Gonna lock that layer. Gonna turn off print because we're not gonna turn this part in. And dim images. Now keep in mind we are using the Adobe Illustrator file. So the one we're gonna turn in is not Illustrator, but you need to save this in case you need to edit, change, adjust, whatever. So um, there we go. So we're gonna use the art layer right now. I'm gonna move my panels out of the way. Working in small space to help you guys out here. And there's my layers over there disappearing. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is on my art layer, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, draw some rectangles. And I'm going to use a different color the, than the rectangles that are shown because I want to see my work versus their work. So let's change my color. Blue is different than red. And I can always change it later. Colors can always change later. So I'm going to draw some rectangles. So if I draw this one here, now if I want to maintain consistency, one mark of good design in fonts and lettering and stuff is consistent uh, stem width, okay? So I'm going to alt drag that bad boy over, and there we go. Um, gosh, what to do, what to do. So many things to do here, and the easy part is actually designing the shape of the letter itself. So I am now going to... Gosh, I could copy by alt-dragging, or I could just draw another rectangle. 
Let's draw one. And so I want to use this shape consistently. I want it to have it be the same on every piece. Now this is a serif. Okay, so serifs are these embellishments that go on the edge of serifed letters. This is a serif font. And I'm going to drag this up here like this. And I'm going to drag this one over here like this. So you know what I could do is drag both of them. So if I Alt, no, excuse me, if I Select, and then Control Select. No, how about Shift Select? Shift Select allows me to grab two things at once. So by Alt, Shift, dragging those over. Notice I'm copying them over. And now I've now got those there. Or not. I thought I got them both. Maybe I can only do that with one piece at a time. So Alt, Shift, Drag. Remember, this is the same shape. I just copied the heck out of it. Alt, Shift, Drag. Okay. Now, as you can see, I have a bit of an issue with this one extending beyond that corner. So I do want to pay attention to issues about corners like that. And there we go. Now, what's missing is, of course, the diagonal. So for that, I probably want to maintain stem size. Before I get too far, let's inspect and note that this one, this stem is a bit tall. So I'm going to shorten that down. I'm even going to go below because it's got enough space in there to fill. By space barring and dragging left, I can move my canvas around. Okay, so I want to make sure that all my work is consistent. Let's double click the hand tool to zoom out. And I'm going to take this piece and remember my friend, the Pathfinder, who's hanging out with his friend, Align. Pathfinder, unite. Da -da -da. There we go. And you know what I still should have used probably is another stem there. The stem I'm going to use, so many ways to do this. What should I do? Uh, let's take the stem tool, or the rectangle tool actually, and let's undo that unite. So let's take this piece, and if I watch this, edit, copy, and then edit, paste in front. You can't really see that extra copy, but if you look at layers, you'll note that we have a bunch of pieces inside that layer. So these are objects inside the layer. So what I'm going to do with that new piece I just made is if I use the, hmm, let's use the shear tool. So shear allows me to do this with it, which is looking bad so far because it's shearing around that point. So I'm going to move the shear point down. So that's the center point of the shear. So I drag that down first, and now I want to shear it this way. Okay, not too bad, not too bad, not great, but okay, let's do that. Now I can stretch it up or take the points. Here's where we're going to start using the layer panel, okay, because this piece here is united, this piece is not. So we're going to start locking some stuff to prevent loss and damage and stuff. So let's take, uh, we're going we're gonna to unite this piece. I don't want to unite that with the diagonal stem. So I've only got those three pieces selected, and now I'm going to use Pathfinder Unite. And now Layers Panel now shows only three pieces, so I'm going to lock everything except for that diagonal right there. So I've got this. Now I can't select anything else because they're locked. That means I'm not going to mess them up, which is great. I hate messing up my work. So I'm going to use the Direct Selection tool, which allows me to select individual points and move them around. That didn't work. Why did that not work? Select again. So I undid. Use undo. Okay. I just want to move the point. I just want to move the point. So I take this. Drag it over. Take this one. And I can use the arrow keys to move points over. I want to pay attention that I'm not moving other points. Just this point. And also not a bad idea is to, again, inspect. Because if I want to have a consistent line down there, it may be a good idea to take both of those points and move them up slightly or move them down slightly. I'm not sure which. So I want to unite this in the end, but not yet. So that my points are all... You know what? It's going to be imperfect. It's going to get messed up, and I'm going to have to get in there and fix the points. It's just how it is. So get used to that, and don't expect your work to come out perfect on the first go. See how you have a gap there. So let's unite all this. Is it perfect? Yeah, not so much, but it's not bad. So let's take uh, these pieces, unlock them, select them. I don't know. Something in there looks wrong to me. Well, let's fix it later. Uh, um, so Pathfinder Unite. 
So now what I've done is I've combined all those things into one path. And that's actually a good thing because now I can adjust individual points a lot easier. So for example, right here, if I click and drag to get that point, I can just move that point down. And let's zoom out to see if I just moved that or moved everything, which could happen. It happens. Let's take um, that point and adjust it down. I'm using the arrow keys, quick and easy. Now, let's look at this because we have extra points. So the key to getting rid of those is there's a button up here. You can also use object, path, and uh, remove anchor points, which is almost off the screen there. So that removes points. So I want to really just kind of cruise around every place where there might be a point and see if I have extra points. That one's good. In this case, extra points is not a good thing. I'm going to leave that there because there's not extra points. It's not aligned to the original. It's okay. So I'm cruising around. I'm holding down the space bar and dragging with my mouse. Now if I zoom out just a smidge, I notice that that point is out of line. You're out of line! So I take this and I move it over and maybe up. And that's much better. So space bar to move around. Let's take this one and move it over. And again, I'm looking for a place where there's extra points, like right here, extra points. Which one should we take out? Which one's to keep? Let me think. Let's take these out. And there's a button up here that does the same thing as the earlier. Remove, select the anchor points. Boom. And we want that bottom to be flat and straight, though, don't we? So let's move that around. I'm using the arrow keys. It's quick and easy. It's accurate. It's good. Okay, let's say I'm happy with this, which more or less I am. It's good. It'll work. But i got to get that boundary around the outside. This is where it gets interesting. So we're going to introduce to you a new command today called the... Boy, I can't even remember what it's called. But it's uh, expand outlines. No, it's not expand outlines. Um, gosh, it's over here. Object. Path. Offset path. Yes. What offset path does is it makes a whole other object. So before we do that, let's bring back our layers panel so we can see what happens there. That's where the action is, yo. So object path, offset path, and what that does is it makes a whole nother object, and if we preview, turn preview off, you can see that it's offsetting the path by some distance. Now what I want to do is take this number here for offset, it's almost a fifteenth of an inch, not a fifteenth of an inch, it's almost 0.15, uh, yeah, math. Let's try 0.2. Okay, so that's pretty good on this one, depending on how big you made your object. You may need to make it bigger or smaller. Let's try point two two, And I'm just trying to get the offset here. Now, if I click OK, now we have two paths of the same thing. Turn one off, that's the top one. Turn one off, that's the bottom one. Let's take this and reverse them, because we want the thicker one on the bottom. Did I just do it backwards? Totally did. So put the, put the, put the larger path on the bottom. There we go. So the larger path uh, we're going to change this one to white. We are so almost there, you guys. And um, why did that totally not work? Because I didn't have it selected. Ha! <laughs> yeah, we're going to change this to white. If you don't have the thing selected, nothing occurs the changes that you're looking for on it. And then we're going to change the edge, the stroke around the outside, to red. Now, I noticed that the Nebraska color is a bit of a deeper red, so I'm going to darken that up a little bit. And let's crank up the stroke size a bit more. Okay, what about that inside part? Let's go back to my layers panel. And here's this. Am I almost there? Totally, totally am almost there. Let's try something weird here. Let's take this. If I use the eyedropper tool and click on that bottom shape, it now takes over the, the, the same capabilities. But if I switch them down here, switch those colors, I've matched the color. And I'm now going to turn off the stroke. So now, as you can see, I have created the Nebraska logo. To turn this in, of course, you're going to use File, Save first. Make sure you have an Adobe Illustrator document saved because it contains all your layers and all your effects and all your stuff and your name. And if you need to change something, you can adjust it using all the stuff in your layers. But once you go File, Save for Web, the copy that you're going to make using Save for Web, which is going to be a PNG, Okay, you're going to choose PNG. This is not going to have layers. That's just for turning it in. Okay, so that's how it works. I uh, hope you have fun developing the Nebraska logo. You may need to watch and rewatch this 
uh, to get it right, but it's totally fun, you guys, okay? Peace, late.